audience. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the in introduction. So, um, in the presented work, um, I focused on the geometric altitude. In this presentation, I will first give an introduction to the fundamentals, then I'll give a problem definition, and then talk about the results and give a short summary. If there are any questions, please feel free to interrupt me. So a few words about myself. I've been working in the field of ATC surveillance for a bit more than 10 years now. Um, first at the university, then at different companies. And I started my own company about two years ago uh, called Open ATS. The first word open is not a coincidence. Uh, we mostly do open source tools, which we publish for free for anyone to use. And we do that um, and do sensor and tracker evaluations, tracker tunings, and tool development. So first, to discuss the problem definition, uh, we have to talk a bit about radars because we're focusing on improving radar plot accuracy. So radars, of course, measure aircraft position using azimuth and range. Um, and the range is based on signal runtime. So basically, we have not a ground range, but a slant range that is coming from the radar. To convert this into a ground range, so not the diagonal line, but the horizontal line, we need the altitude of the aircraft. Historically speaking, the only source of this altitude information in civilian applications was the barometric altitude. If the altitude information used for the slant range correction is missing or wrong, then we will have a range offset. Just to give an indication how this works, on the bottom left, you have a small example how this works, um, but doesn't really work this way. This, on the right-hand side, you have the more detailed information when you include a curvature. Also, we have to talk a bit about altitude types. There are many types of altitude. For this presentation or work, we will focus on three. So the first one is the barometric altitude. This is commonly downlinked by any secondary sensors as the mode C code, for example. It's calculated based on air pressure differences. It's given in feet or flight level, and it's referenced to the main sea level. Um, so the geoid, basically. With ADSB, we also get the geometric altitude, which is downlinked and calculated based on GPS or whatever GNSS systems that you have. This one is referenced to the VGS84 ellipsoid. Also, certain types of radars can measure the altitude information themselves, um, mostly military ones, but also some civilian ones. And this is there called the 3D height, basically measured to the radar plane, but then referenced to the mean sea level. Why are radars still interesting? And why is improving radar plot accuracy still of interest? Um, as you can see in this very nice uh, figure from Eurocontrol, radar coverage, at least for Europe, is quite the backbone of ATC surveillance now. So uh, in orange, we have the coverage of four plus radars. And if you think about that some areas have, excuse me, coverage of more than 30 radars, you can think about how many radars are existing in Europe, let's say a few hundreds. Radars also complement the new technologies because they have known accuracy and they are quite reliable, and it's a known technology, so we know what to expect from, from radars. So I'm not saying that they are better in any way. There is a big discussion about this, what ADSB and multilateration is compared to radars. We're not going into that. I'm just saying they are still relevant currently. And now the assumption could be made that the barometric altitude maybe is not the best source for slant range correction because, as we will see, as presented in the paper, uh, we have position offsets. So the scope of the work, based on a 24-hour data set of Austrian air traffic surveillance, thank you, Eurocontrol, uh, we do an analysis of the geometric and barometric altitude offsets. 
to see are there offsets, how big are they, how are they distributed. Then we will try to reconstruct the geometric altitudes based from barometric ones. Why is this important? Why not use the, if we have ADSB, why not use the geometric altitude for each aircraft immediately? Well, you could do that, but not all aircraft are equipped with ADSB. Not all of them deliver reliable geometric altitude information. And maybe you would like to have some, let's say, filtering in between the aircraft. So to do this for all aircraft in all possible circumstances, we need to reconstruct them, so model them. Then, based on this model, we will um, compare the pressure and temperatures from the model to real-life meteorological data to have a look if this fits real-life data. And then look at potential benefits. So basically comparing to reference ATC tracker data, if we used the three different altitudes, altitudes that we have, compared to the reference data, which one gives the best estimate of position. So geometric and barometric altitude offsets, um, quite easy to calculate, you make a difference. Um, thinking back to two slides before, you have still to adjust for the geoid, but apart from that, it's rather easy. Um, but now I'm, I'm making a difference and I'm basically having the assumption that geometric altitude from ADSB is more accurate than um, barometric al altitude. Um, this is given by a paper. So basically the standard deviation um, of the geometric altitude was measured in 2014. I couldn't find an, any more recent study uh, to be uh, 2.3 meters, so standard deviation, uh, the two sigma value of half. So how does this look like? Uh, we have now two figures. On the left-hand side, we have the dis distribution um, of the offset on the x-axis and on the y-axis the count. Uh, please note the logarithmic scale. So we can see that the large portion of our altitude offsets are about 300 meters plus. So significant. On the right-hand side, the same disk distribution now as a two-dimensional histogram on the x-axis against, uh, again, the difference, and on the y-axis, the barometric flight level. And we can see the higher the flight level, the larger the offsets, and that a large part of our error dis distribution um, is at the up upper flight levels. Also, we can see a lot of the data that we have is about, let's say, uh, above flight level 250, 300. So from this, we can see there are significant offsets in barometric to geometric altitude. Now, how to reconstruct geometric altitude? First, we have to talk a bit about how altitude is calculated based on pressure. So this is the standard formula to calculate this based on the respective ICAO doc documentation and an ISA standard atmosphere. And basically, the only two terms for the standard calculations are uh, the pressure P, and all others are constants. And from this, you get then an H, which is a height. So for example, an aircraft is in cruise, measures the pressure at altitude P, and then using this formula with these standard per parameters, it can calculate its altitude and um, downlink this as a mode C. But we are in the real world and there are three terms of importance. One is the temperature T0, which is the stand standard temperature at mean sea level. P0, the pressure at mean sea level, and alpha, the temperature gradient. These are based on a standard atmosphere and in the model used in IKEA for mode C, all constant, which is of course wrong because temperature and pressure varies all over the world. So this could be sources of, um, let's say, pa parameters of interest. So if we want to reconstruct something, there are a lot of things that we can do with model fitting, right? We have, if we remember the previous formula, we have a nonlinear formula, but we want to then approximate something. Now, if we chose 
what we did in the work, the pressure, temperature, and alpha value, then we could really compare these values also to real life data, which is a nice thing. Also, we have to use the standard formula as the rest of the industry does. So to do that, we used this 24 hour data set, um, converted everything into these uh, space time grid cells so that we have at least some um, amount of data, data in, in each cell. Then we used a nonlinear mean square error approximation to fit these parameters as stated above using a Levenberg market algorithm. We tried different ones. This one worked best for us. Okay. Now, what did this result in? So on the left hand side, you have again in red, the error distribution of the altitude offsets. And in blue, we tested the reconstructed geometric altitude versus the real one in blue. So you can see you have much less offsets, not perfect, not, still not a perfect match, but very much increased to the original bar barometric height. And on the right hand side, we have one of these example cells. So a quarter of a latitude longitude um, and one hour of data modeled as these colored points over geometric altitude. And in blue, then, the fitted line using the calculated model parameters in this specific cell. Quite a nice fit. Um, also, just for reference, it looks a bit linear, doesn't it? And then to compare everything to real-life meteorological data, we now have a nicely fitted model that can reconstruct geometric altitudes from barometric altitudes only. But how do we know this makes any sense at all? Well, we can look at the pressures and the temperatures. And using temperatures and pressures from the meteorological data of the operational system in Austria at the Vienna airport, we can compare them. So on the left hand side, over time, we have the development of pressure compared to the one from MATS data. So black is the MATS data, blue is the reconstructed one. Um, in hecto Pascal un un unit. On the right hand side, the temperature. We can see that especially the temperature is an imperfect fit. For the pressure, we could argue it's about the same if we don't look too, too, too closely. Um, for the temperature, it doesn't make sense, especially in the lower regions. The dynamics are basically off. But what we could argue is that there is a correlation. So how does this help us? Well, actually, it doesn't matter too much how close the fit is. Let me explain that. So the optimization method, of course, doesn't consider any physical constraints, right? It optimizes the parameters for the data. And we're not looking at the temperature and pressures used for modeling the lower flight levels as are they are used in the IKO documents, because normally they only use this for the Q and H correction below a certain flight level. We are looking at flight levels well above 300 for most of our data. So the fit will be off in any way, any case. Also, the optimization method didn't care about physical parameters or bounds. It just looked for optimal solutions. So if one wanted to, one could spend further work and try to find an um, optimization strategy that best fits also the meteorological data. We didn't do that. We just chose one method and it fit. And we are more interested in the reconstruction result. But we can see even the parameters didn't fit. They exhibit a correlation, which is interesting. So the argument made in the paper is the estimated model is of reasonable accuracy and credibility if the reconstructed geometric altitude values allow for a significant increase in radar plot accuracy. So how do we measure that? So in the data set, we had a single radar, um, which also gave us this 3D altitude information additionally. And for each of the radar plots, we calculated three different positions. 
So we use the slant range correction as presented in one of the first slides with three different altitudes. One is the parametric one, the original one, then the reconstructed geometric one, and the 3D height as measured by this specific radar. And then we compare these three positions to tracker reference positions, so interpolated ones from the operational real-life ATC tracker in Aust Austria, which is, of course, not the perfect reference, but the best one that we could have for this amount of data. The results of that are shown in this graph. So we have three different Cartesian offsets now. In red, the original one based on the barometric altitude. In blue, the reconstructed geometric one. And in green, the 3D height from the radar. Um, the Cartesian offset is now in meters on the y-axis. Um, on the x-axis, again, the time, we calculated that in 30-minute intervals. So we can see that the geometric, reconstructed geometric altitude gave by far the best results, um, having an offset only of 50 meters, Cartesian offset with a standard deviation of 32 meters, while the original barometric one was above 90 meters offset and 40 meters standard deviation, and the 3D height as delivered by the radar um, was suboptimal for this ap application. Basically, same result, but now in range offset, which is more interesting. Uh, here we see even a larger improvement of the geometric, so the reconstructed geometric altitude, uh, giving an increase, um, excuse me, a decrease of offset uh, by about 60 meters, and also a decrease in standard deviation. So based on that, we would argue that the position accuracy improvement is significant and the model is additionally verified. So of course, one could make the argument that if we have an inaccuracy in the reference position in the track updates, of course, uh, then this will degrade the accuracy of our measurements. This is com completely true. But we're not looking at the absolute values of the numbers, we're looking of uh, at the performance increase, so the relative change. And the relative change is the range offset decreases by about 60 meters and also decreases the standard deviation. So may maybe this is then a, more of a discussion than based on these, these results. Um, these are nice, so okay, you can use geometric altitude to reconstruct physics-based parameters to really reconstruct geometric altitude based on barometric ones from all aircraft. But why is this important? Well, you could, of course, put this into a radar. And then you have radars with improved accuracy. And such radars exist. They already use four targets that have a geometric altitude in ADS-B. And if they have an ADS-B receiver in the radar, they can use that. But they don't do it for all aircraft, they can't. And of course, then you have one radar as an AS, ANSP, for example, that does that and seven that don't. So how do you integrate that then? So a more interesting application would be to put this in an actual ATC tracker, this technology. Just for reference, of course, this is also interesting for uh, primary radar applications, because there you can also make use of the geometric alt alt altitude information and where you never have ADSB, and of course for, let's say, quality assessment like your controls, SESI, Verif, or something else. But let's talk about the ATC tracker. Um, this tracker then gets information of all the radars and has ADSB source or sources. So how do we apply that then, this technology to this application? And how much does it benefit us? Well, this totally depends on the tracker, right? I mean, all of the trackers have advanced error correction mechanisms, outlier detections, whatever. Some of them also use geometric altitude where available. So it's really a solution-specific argument. Also, it strongly depends on the sensor infrastructure. If you have 10 radars, 
uh, then maybe they correct this altitude offsets for the most to the most degree. So it's a hard argument to make, but just as a starting point of the discussion, um, if you wanted to do that, I would suggest to use another reconstruction model. So not use this temperature and pressure based one, which is nice to compare it to meteorological data, but it requires a, a large number of target reports to be actually accurate because it's a non-linear fit, right? A linear fit would be much more appropriate based on my previous trials. Also, since this was now an offline analysis, you would need to adapt it to an online analysis. If you were to choose a linear fit model, then a Kalman filter variant would be easiest, right? So based on the presented work and these interpretations, the main point is the presented work allows for a significant enhancement in some ATC tracking applications and some environments. So as a summary, we looked at geometric and barometric altitude offsets. We saw that they are significant. We compared the reconstructed temperature and pressure model parameters to real life Viennese METS data. It provided an imperfect fit, but I'd argue a strong correlation. And then we checked if the reconstructed geometric altitudes improved radar accuracy and it showed a strong improvement. So the range offsets by about 40 meters improvement and lowering the standard deviation by about 13 meters. The actual values there will be very solution specific and data specific also depending on what day you look at, which weather, which pressures and so on. But just to give uh, some rough numbers. And we showed that the presented work allows for a significant enhancement in some circumstances. This is it. Thank you. Any questions?